Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I. This is episode number 13 of our Let's Play series, playing as the Entente, or otherwise the Allies. Uh, and in this episode we're picking things up just after the fall of Belgrade, uh, actually the liberation of Belgrade. So early in the war, Belgrade fell to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The Serbians were pushed back. They were on the verge of defeat. We were able to stem the tide, hold in the mountains south of the city. And as the result of Romania getting involved, sort of the, the mini collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire on the Eastern Front, sort of on the Hungarian portion of the front to the south of Poland, as a result of their collapse kind of there, we have been able to kind of stem the tide and just counterattack in the last episode against the Austrians in on the Serbian front. And we retook Belgrade, the capital of Serbia. So great news there for us. Romania joined a couple of episodes ago to join the war. Diplomacy seems to be working to hold Bulgaria out of the war. The Ottomans are kind of relegated because they don't have a land front in Europe. They don't have access to Bulgaria. The Ottomans are kind of limited to just playing a part in the Caucasus and in, in, in the Sinai. And both of those theaters are too remote or too inhospitable to support large offensive thrusts right now. They don't have the strength to push through rugged defensive terrain in the Caucasus. They don't have the front available to them. It's too narrow to push through the Sinai. And as a result, the Ottomans have kind of been taken out of the war. And so as a result, it's largely Germany fighting on its own at the moment, trying to prop up Austria-Hungary, which is on the verge of collapse, and trying to, you know, be everywhere at once. And they only have so many troops and resources to do that. So overall, the war is going really well for the Central Powers so far. We've held a really strong line, basically on the Franco-German border and the French-Belgian border. So after that initial thrust into Belgium, which knocked Belgium out of the war, the Allies have been doing really well. There's been a massive naval battle as well in the North Sea. The Germans had did a ton of damage to the Royal Navy, but they also suffered a lot of damage in their fleet as well. Probably the greatest naval battle in history, if this was a real thing. So it's it's all uh, it's interesting, but I think things are really tilting strongly in our favor. With that being said, this was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel. If you are interested in checking that out, you can click the link and go over there. Also, if the game looks interesting to you, there's another link to purchase the game through an affiliate store of mine. So if you do purchase the game through that, you get a Steam key and I get a small commission. Um, and I think that's everything. So let's go ahead and jump right back into the live stream and pick things up where we left them off. It feels a little premature, perhaps. <laughs> Hey guys, it's on the front line of the war. Let's move the capital there. Sounds about right to me. They destroyed my warship in port. That never works. The Germans are just going hell mel to break that blockade. They must know. Like, I wonder if the AI knows it's like, yep, we've got the advantage. We're going to do it. And they just destroyed another one of my battleships. I'm sorry, but this is just absurd. It's so absurd. I don't know that they're cheating, it's just... I don't know. Whatever. I don't know... We just really need to get the damn Austrians to surrender. It's just like charge, charge forward. And I don't think the Germans have invested any more in their navy than they did. Like, they haven't made, the AI hasn't made any technology investments. Or they, maybe they have in technology, but um, new unit investments in the navy. I, I pretty, I doubt that. I'm guessing this is mostly just the fleet Germany gets sort of by stock.
Okay. So the Russians probably are going to spend this turn upgrading a lot of their units that aren't in contact. Infantry level 1. Yeah, I don't know if the the AI might be able to see through fog war. They sure rarely run into my units by mistake. I'm not clear on that one. In any event, let's see where Bulgaria is at now that our turn's going to start. They were at 81% last time. This turn, by the way, we lost a French just two French destroyers and the Corbu. We also lost the Empress of India, the Tiger battle cruiser, so we lost three capital ships. And they got sunk. Just trying to get back to port. Don't mind me. Alright, let's pull... Why are my pre-dreadnoughts and their pre-dreadnoughts so unable to hurt each other? I mean, I know pre-dreadnoughts were not uh, the most efficient ships, should we put it that way. Damn it. For fuck's sake, just sink the bastard. Of course. Um, Alright, let's bring our destroyer here. Oh, she's going to run into an enemy sub. ships out of here. So we'll get the Marlboro Dreadnought out of there. The Invincible, I'll swing around this way. Finish off that German pre-dreadnought. Use the Queen Elizabeth against this guy. God, that is weird. The pre-dreadnoughts take less damage than the dreadnoughts? Or is it maybe it's because of the weather, it's raining. So maybe sighting is bad, I guess. That could be the logic. Um All right, so finished off another pre-dreadnought. So what were we at before? 32, and they were at 27, so we lost three. They've lost two. I kind of have to vacate the entire blockade line, which is annoying as fuck.
Okay. Sail the new French dreadnought up this way. Yeah, they had like one destroyer squadron. Wasn't a very large force, but they did they did have a small force involved. So I wonder what this is gonna do in terms of like the blockade effect on Germany. Is is this considered like the blockade's fully lifted? Or what? I don't know. Okay, let's reinforce here. Right. So we'll go a little bit light on the Western Front this turn. Meanwhile, diplomacy, they're at 81% still. That's a lot. Those 35%, you'd think that would hit, that would hit eventually. Austria-Hungary's morale at 13%. It went up slightly. I wonder why. They lost Belgrade. Alright, so we just destroyed that Austro-Hungarian core. Gets them back down to 12. Oh, you're right, they destroyed a capital ship in port. That was probably it. Um... So, a couple of things we need to make sure we're doing here. First off, let's shift these guys west. Put these guys in Belgrade. Alright, so... Kind of a broken through here in the south. Could try and move toward Pola. Don't think it's unoccupied, but in any event, we're in the rear here. Okay. Reinforce these troops. Thanks for the follow, Clean Stir. Appreciate it.
What's the what's the supply gonna be like next turn up there? Oh, pretty bad. They're gonna be completely out of supply, huh? Maybe you shouldn't have rushed quite so aggressively toward Budapest. But we are a hex. We're adjacent to Budapest. Meanwhile, did these guys... I thought I researched the infantry level 1 for the Russians. Oh, not quite. We got to infantry warfare level 1. Okay. So doctrine, not the other item. So let's operate some of these troops. Down here to Klausberg. Um, let's see here. So we've got troops entrenching on all of the approaches. From Bulgaria. Okay. I don't really know what good air does other than they can be useful for like scouting and stuff let's I don't I don't there's not a lot of the Germans have not been very aggressive on the eastern front their navy's been going gangbusters but they have not been attacking all that much um so whoa 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 wait a minute so if the Germans have dreadnoughts still back here what the hell do they all have out at sea really Okay, then, I guess. That's a thing, I suppose. So they still have a light cruiser and the Koenig at Danzig. Trying to break that first defensive line in front of Königsberg to see if we can't gain a little bit of ground there. It's tough going, obviously. Tough sledding, as they say. Uh, the German morale's at 56. The Austro-Hungarian's at 12. I'm assuming I'll get infantry tech level 1 for the Russians next turn. I'm also thinking because I'm adjacent to Budapest, we may see like a complete withdrawal here in the south, perhaps. I mean, I guess we'll see. Do we have any idea? So their, their supply lines still, they have a rail line coming through Pressburg. Um, yeah, so these troops are still in supply, unfortunately. Also, I don't know how well that cavalry unit 
I don't, I don't know how well a division of cavalry stands up to anything. Alright, so I'm also trying to sort of freak these guys out here in uh, Yugoslavia area to get them to pull back. I'm playing as the Entente Novo, so I'm all of the sort of allied powers. What the fuck? I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Did I just bombard empty space? I wanted to move him there. All right. Okay. Pull the dreadnought back there. I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself and overextended in Yugoslavia. I'm just hoping that, or really in the Eastern Front, I'm just hoping, like, if I take Budapest, it might be over. The The damn Austro-Hungarians might surrender. But I'm definitely overextended. I need to take Grossvarden so I can clean that rail line and then move the, the Russian headquarters forward. But... We'll see. So this turn I've got a lot of money left over. So let's purchase some new stuff. Uh, the British are going to need more warships, but I don't have enough money for dreadnoughts or anything like that at the moment. I could purchase some Canadian units. Uh, the French... We could go with artillery, but I actually think I'd rather wait for some tanks. So the British are infantry weapons, infantry warfare, command and control. Let's do gas shell production. Let's do industrial tech. Just give me all the monies. I think that's my general response. And make things cheaper. And... Trench it up. I might be going overly gangbusters on research. All right, so where are the Russians at with research? Infantry warfare, get that going to get to the next level. And then I don't really have much artillery for them, but let's get their industrial tech. Oh, I don't have money. All right, well, production technology then. All right, so let's move forward to October of 1915 and see what that has in store for us. Genius idea. Send the Navy through the Dardanelles. Austro-Hungarian authorizes suppression... Authorizes suppress a naval mutiny at Katero. All right. Foreign Minister reports diplomatic success with Bulgaria, moving at 7% toward the Entente. So hopefully that uh, helps us out here. We'll see if the Germans keep going like absolute mad... Madness at our... shipping all right whole bunch of research progress and success heavy bombers level one we didn't get to infantry warfare yet
no Falkenheim to stop me. Well, Romania joined me, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think the Germans are quite ready to. Uh, that doesn't seem. Jesus Christ, how many freaking destroyers do they have in there? Interesting, they used a battle cruiser against me. Against a destroyer and did no damage. Alright, let's see how the Austrians respond. Mostly they just seem to be digging in in place. That's interesting. Budapest itself is only held by a detachment. There is a fortification with a core adjacent to it. I also wonder if they're getting some, like, Hungary's being invaded so you get some free militia because it looked like they just raised a new cavalry corps. Stop it! The German blimps are apparently bombing now. Some of the research goes so slow in this game compared to, like, Strategic Command World War II. It's kind of interesting. You can see the Germans are outfitting their army more and more with level 1 troops. Or, up, I guess, level 2 if you include the fact that it's an upgraded unit. They're losing quite a few casualties on these attacks here. They're not they're not terribly successful. Now, it might be more successful in uh, in Egypt with the Ottomans. I think they just raised like three new units near Arad there. Let's see what their national morale looks like. If it's still stuck at 12% or... How do I get it down further? There's not enough uh, Austrian troops for me to kill the drop it at this point. Can I please get infantry weapons level 1 for all of my allied troops now? I've been pouring money into research. I don't know what else I could be doing. Did the German troops pull back from Premzel? Because if they did, maybe that would be a good place to launch an assault. It looks like Premzel's largely unoccupied. I might be able to launch an assault in there. I guess we'll see. It could just be bad spotting. Okay. Well, it's raining on the Western Front. Don't think we're going to be doing much there. All right, so we lost a light cruiser. Wasn't too bad there, though. Only one, only one warship lost. France has a new core. The Russians, I didn't deploy their sub. Meanwhile, still raining in the North Sea, huh? Like, really bad. Okay. Oh, come on. There's always a goddamn surprise. Got it. All right, so we finished off an, finished off an enemy armored cruiser.
and an enemy light cruiser. Or where are they at now? They were at 20. They're still at 25 warships. I mean, they've kind of completely swept me off the blockade line. I could spend a whole bunch of money reinforcing some of these ships, but... I mean, that, that's going to be like my whole income for this turn is trying to reinforce three battleships here. And we can't even get them back to full strength for that cost. Okay, so we're pulling back some of our ships. Interior, we still have some ships on the on the northern blockade line, but it's not fully closed up. You know, all the French dreadnoughts coming up here forgot about this. We'll sneak it in there as well, so it's part of that fleet. And uh, we'll pull these troops back and just replace them with some, some new fresh troops. I don't really want to attack in the mud, although, just as I say I don't want to attack in the mud, looks like I can do some serious damage to this one unit. Do they really have a gap in their line? So the Germans had a pretty gigantic gap here. The weather was nicer. I probably could have exploited exploited it a little bit more with some cavalry. As it was, I advanced a little bit inside or, no, this is still Belgium, so I'm not inside German territory yet. Okay. Diplomacy. So they are, we're at 81. They're down to 74 in Bulgaria. The Austro-Hungarians are down to 10% national morale. These guys have no supply. Okay. Let's reinforce these Romanians because we need to. They're very weak right now. Um, I just can't keep these guys surrounded by the looks of it. Yeah, if they're going to pull back a little bit from Premzol, should we? Eh, maybe not. Attacking Premzol directly looks like still it's a bad idea. Maybe attacking these Austro-Hungarian troops is a terrible idea. Their 
all sitting at 10%. And it basically is there any way to just overwhelm these guys like it I guess slowly maybe it gave me one to one there but that didn't even accomplish anything my cavalry actually did something there Let's pull these troops back, I suppose. I just don't have the supplies far enough for it yet. So, as much as I would like to advance on Budapest, I just can't. Still a really strong German formation here. They've got 67 units. Shift these guys, move these guys. Come on. You're telling me you still... All of those attacks and you still can't finish off the damn militia there. Thanks for the follow, uh, Mrs. Medieval. Those German troops don't look dug in. I hate to do that because they lose so much morale and readiness to do that, but had to get those guys back in a in a fort. Couldn't leave the fort in front of Warsaw exposed. Know what to do. I can't break through. The weather's turning bad. I don't have the supplies to push on Budapest. I'm just trying to hurt the Hungarians wherever I or the Austro-Hungarians wherever I can. The Russians have a lot of money right now. So I think the answer for the Russians at the moment, we've already, I think, almost maxed our investment for them. Well, they actually have quite a bit left they can invest. Still, it, we're investing three in trench warfare, logistics, I guess industrial technology we should invest in. Wait, was that the Russians or the Serbs? No, it was the Russians. What am I looking at? Serbia is 380... Oh boy. Um, maybe mobility would help. All right. New units. The Russians have a sub, which I need to move some units so I can deploy. So we'll do that. New units here. France has a new core ready. I mean, honestly, at this point, what do we consider an amphibious landing in Germany somewhere? Like, or I mean, we could just try going an all out. I've been kind of trying to chip away at the Germans in the West, but I suppose we could go all out. Uh, meanwhile, diplomacy, Serbia, do they have a chit? No, whose who's chit was spent on Bulgaria? Okay, 
So we're going to keep working on Bulgaria to keep them out of the war. Serbia is 387 left. So hell yeah, get some artillery maybe. I mean, I mainly focus this turn in the south on logistics. So. Why can't any of my attacks go as forecasted this turn? Do you think they'd pull out of a rod? This is a. It looks to me like it should be a death trap. How do you pull supplies through that narrow? -o? A front. Morgan India, thank you very much for the follow. All right, well, there you have it. We're ready to wrap this turn up. It is the fall of 1915, October of 1915. The autumn rains have come, slowing down some of our offensives, uh, but overall, pretty happy with where we're at right now. So, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. As always, leave your thoughts down below, and until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.